and the virus will um, come off on the corn. So if you actually escape and go to the field, you will have a few reach there with virus, but it won't be much. First problem we have when we direct see the corn sometimes we don't get the exact amount of plant population to make the, the barrier like every six inches we a plant. So we have to use in starter trees like these we we'll use and transplant to the field. What we can do also we can direct seed and we we'll direct seed those that don't come they just use and filter. But the best way to start from the seeding trees and then transplant them from the field. So I'm just gonna transplant the cans and now in two rows, about a foot apart on both sides, all the way down to the hen. In order to get a solid barrier, right? So you plant two here, two here, two here. When you're going to plant on the opposite side now, you're going to catch it in between these two plants. Don't plant them facing one another because you want this plant now to come and cloud out here. Reading the label of the pesticide is of utmost importance. Keep these labels for information on human toxicity, color code, the brand name and chemical composition, safety measures and protective gear that should be used with the pesticide, medical information should poisoning occur, directions for use with list of treatable crops and pests, restricted entry period, pre-harvest interval, and storage and disposal information. Okay, so what we have here is something to help us uh, measure the wind. Um, you see there's a wind blowing and this thing going around tells us the wind is uh, this going this speed, like 1.3 miles an hour. Because now if we decide that we have to spray, uh, if we need to spray this field with an insecticide, we've got to do it safely. Because you know like when, when the wind blow too hard, yes. it blow the, uh, the insecticides. And, and what happened then if, if the wind is blowing too strong? It blow away the spray. It blow away the spray, which means the spray doesn't, Effective. It, it doesn't go where it's supposed to go. But then another really big thing is that uh, the, sp the, the spray may blow the insecticide onto you. And if it's that lanate that we were talking about earlier, having that on your body is a little dangerous. So with the spray, you, with the wind, it's uh, the, you want it to be effective and you also don't want to... Uh, you go up as if you breathe. So you go this way, exactly. So, so, so that's what we do. But this is what we use to detect the wind, to like measure how fast it is, because if it's too strong, and it's... So that's why like more early in the morning or late in the evening, the wind died down and it's better for the bees and... We mostly so, spray during the evening. Yeah, it's the best time. Tools needed for this phase are a beaker, a measuring scoop, a pH meter, phosphoric acid, a spreader sticker. The leaf on the left was dipped in water that had spreader sticker mixed in, and the leaf on the right was dipped into plain water. As you can see, the leaf on the right is waxy and has not retained any of the water, whereas the leaf on the left looks like it has a layer of moisture on it. The chemical. Gloves. Goggles. A mask or ventilator. Coveralls. Boots. Gasoline. And a gas-fueled spray pack. Step one is reading the labels. Every chemical is mixed in different proportions. Make sure you follow the directions found on the labels of your products before spraying. Step two is putting on protective gear. It is imperative to cover every part of your body when mixing and spraying chemicals. The chemicals are very strong and oftentimes the smallest amount could kill. Step three is checking and lowering the pH level. Before spraying, the farmer should check on the pH level of the water he or she is using to spray the fields. If the pH is higher than six, it should be lowered to a pH between five and six, 
using small increments of phosphoric acid and mixing with a stick. Step 4 is measuring the proper amounts of agrochemicals and spreader sticker needed for the volume of water being used to spray. Use the appropriate equipment and follow chemical directions to accurately measure out the proper amounts. Step 5 is diluting the agrochemicals and spreader sticker in the water. Step 6 is spraying. Note that the farmer is spraying in the early morning hours when there is no wind. He is spraying one row at a time and is slowly passing the crop in order to ensure full coverage, including the bottoms of the leaves. Things to remember. Insects reproduce rapidly, so the sooner you find the problem, the better. Accurate identification of an insect and an understanding of its habits is of extreme importance for effective control decisions. There are several good bugs the farmer should identify and attempt to protect, including bees, wasps, ladybugs, crab spiders, and earwigs. Always read the labels of any chemicals you are planning to apply in the field. Build a record of the pesticides you use, dosages, volume of water used, the size of insect population at scouting before treatment and after treatment, the time of day, the weather, beneficial insects present, and the developmental stage of the crop. Spraying should take place in the early morning or evening. Live barriers should be replaced with each new crop to ensure effective results. Whether planting a corn barrier or another type of barrier, these crops should be planted in a dense zigzag formation so that there are no gaps in the foliage. Control broad-leaved weeds that harbor insects and plant diseases. And always remove old crop residues from a harvested field.